Hi, everybody. Um, today, what we're going to get into is solving application problems. And so really what we're going to do is we're going to take something that we covered last time and we're just going to take it to the next step. So we've spent some time going through and being able to translate English into algebra. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go the full distance now of being able to take an English language problem and being able to translate it into algebra to be able to solve something mathematically. So what you see on the screen then is a quick four, four English statements that I want you to use as a gauge. If you can go through and you can translate those with no problems, then you have everything that you need from last time. If not, then we've got to go back and we've got to get extra practice of that translating. So I want you to pause and go through and answer those four. Okay, pause it now. Okay, and we're back. So as we take a peek and we go through, let's just imagine that I'm going to use X, Y, A, and happy face as my variables. Clearly, you're not going to use happy face, but just for the sake of variety. So in that first statement where it says three more than five times a number, my a number is going to be represented by X in this case. So it says three more than five times that number. So three more than five times that number. Or we would also have our 5x plus 3, which would represent 3 more than 5 times the number. In B, we go through and we have twice a number decreased by 4. So twice a number in this case, I'll use my y. So 2 times my y decreased by 4. In C, we have 4 times a number increased by 8. So if I use my a number in that case, an a, then I have 4 times a number increased by 8. And for D, 2 times the sum of a number and 3. So that would be a number, which I think I said I was going to use happy face. And so 2 times the sum of a number and 3. And there we go. Make sure that we have the brackets in the correct spot on D, and that should give you a quick gauge as to whether you have translating into an expression from last time. Okay, we're going to take kind of a half a step in to where we're going to go today. Now, what you see when you read the instruction to 2 is you're asked to write an equation in one variable to model each uh, situation. So, just in the instruction, we notice that we have an equation, which means we need an equals to in our statement. Also, you see in brackets that it's one variable. So it has to always be X or always be Y everywhere throughout that equation. Okay, what I'd like you to do is just pause it and give A a read. Okay, pause it now. Okay, we're back. So, the problem says members of the school band sold chocolate-covered almonds to raise money. Paul sold twice as many bars as Sarah. They sold a total of 48 bars. Okay, the question says to write an equation to model the situation. Now, the first thing we need to address is that if we're going to create an equation, then that equation requires a variable. And if we're going to use a variable, then we have to define it. So maybe we take a look at the problem and we see that we're talking about Paul and Sarah selling chocolate-covered almonds. We've got these chocolate-covered almonds bars. So when we start to talk then about that, maybe we look at the statement and we say, okay, I don't even want to think right now as to which each is. I'm just going to say that I want X to be Sarah. Well, maybe that gets a little confusing. Maybe even I just go, how about I let S equal Sarah? That way I've got the same variable. I can denote that pretty quickly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write let S represent, and you can write R-E-P for represent, Sarah's bars. So those are the bars that Sarah sold. Okay. If Sarah sold S bars, 
Then, we need an expression to represent the other person's bars. So, let's say then that we were going to talk about Paul. Oops. Okay. Well, when we read that second sentence, Paul sold twice as many bars as Sarah. Then maybe we can say, well, okay, if Sarah's was S and Paul sold twice Sarah's, then that means, so we have a then statement, two times S is Paul's bars. And hopefully that matches up with translating that sentence. Okay, my last sentence now says they sold a total of 48 bars. And so we could actually build our equation. We could then say the number of Sarah's bars plus the number of Paul's bars must equal 48. And there would be one way to be able to go through and build an equation. Notice my equation is in one variable. I only have S's. We're good. The problem does not ask us to solve, so we're not going to solve it. But I hope you guys could see that if you were given the red equation, we could solve that pretty quickly. Okay, I want to also go through this problem just a different way, because I don't want anybody to think that it's necessarily you must find the right way to translate. No. Sometimes what causes some difficulty with word problems is there's a number of ways to translate things. So let's take a look at this problem. And rather than in the first solution, us going through and using the second sentence to get our let and then statement, let's use the third sentence. So just to reiterate, like just to say again, Paul sold twice as many bars as Sarah. We used that sentence to create our let and then statements. We then used the last sentence to create our equation. What we're going to do is we're going to do this in the opposite way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the last sentence to build our let and then statements. So let's just say that we're consistent and we still started off with let S represent Sarah's bars. Okay, well, if I look at that last statement, then it tells me that combined they sold 48 bars. So if S is Sarah's bars, then my total 48 minus the number that Sarah sold is Paul's bars. Now, sometimes that might not be an easy topic to kind of get. So let me put you in this situation. Two numbers add to give 10. One of them is four. What's the other one? Okay, we should be good with that. It's six. Do you see? that our answer to six was just the total minus the number we were given. Okay, let's try that again. Two numbers total to give 10. One of them is eight. What's the other one? Well, the way we could come up with that other number is to take our total and subtract the one we know. See, we just fill in two here instinctually, but that's what we're doing. We're taking our total and we're subtracting the one we know. So if we go back and we take a look, we've been told in that underlying sentence that something plus something has to give me 48. And so if S is one of those somethings, then the other one has to be the total minus the one I know. And there's where we come in on 48 minus S being Paul's bars. Okay, we just used the blue underlying sentence to create our let and then statement. Now we need to use 
And I'm just going to bubble in or circle the second sentence to build our equation. Paul sold twice as many bars as Sarah. Okay, so for me to build that statement then, I need to create a translation for that sentence. And I'm going to literally translate that sentence. It starts off with Paul. So what was Paul's bars? 48 minus S. Paul sold twice. So Paul's is twice. So is is equals. Twice is two times. And now we have Sarah's. Sarah's was S. And there we go. So two different ways to get to it. I hope that very quickly we can take a look at those two equations that we built and see that they are the same equation. Like to get rid of a minus S, I add S, and you notice that you have the exact same equation as what we have on the left. Okay? Different ways to come up with an equation. Sometimes the options, the choice is what makes it difficult. A lot of us would prefer to just like, show me the one way to do it and I'll get really, really good at that one way. But what we do is we take our time and we take our English statement and we translate directly. Okay, let's take a look at B. I want everybody to give B a read right now. So pause it. Okay, now that we've given it a read, we notice Peter and Lois ran as far as they could in 30 minutes. Lois ran 2.5 kilometers farther than Peter. They ran a total distance of 9.5 kilometers. Okay, so we need to build an equation in one variable to represent that. So we start off and we have to say, okay, well, what are we comparing in the problem? And we notice that our second sentence tells us Lois ran 2.5 kilometers farther than Peter. We notice our third sentence tells us that they ran a total of 9.5. Okay, can we start to put together those two distance sentences and try to build an equation? So the first thing to do, let's start with a let statement. And just as before, we could have had multiple options. Like, I could have a lot of people that say, I'm going to start with the red statement, and I'm going to say, let's let, and maybe we're going to deal with Lois as X. So maybe we say, let X represent Lois's distance. But I might have just as many people that would say, hold on a second. I would prefer to let X represent Peter's distance. Both are fine. However, I'm going to argue that I think I would have a lot more people that would like the second option. And here's why. If Lois is X, Lois's distance is X, then Lois ran 2.5 farther than Peter. My then statement in the first case would have to be Lois's distance minus 2.5 is Peter's. Now, why did I say that I'd have a lot of people who would prefer the second option? It's just because most people tend to like their variable to be the smallest thing so that then if X was Peter's distance, then Lois's would be something added on to that. Most of us would prefer to add as opposed to subtract, the same way as most of us would prefer to multiply instead of divide. Both are equally good. Okay, let's take the first case. We use the red sentence. That means we used it up. So, Let's take the blue sentence then to build our equation. They ran a total distance of 9.5 kilometers. Okay, well to get a total distance means I take Lois's and I add it to Peter's and it must give me my total. And there we go. 
Or if we tackled it the second way, then I would say I'm taking Peter's and I add it to Lois's and that gives me the total. And there we go. Now it's important to note we will not get the same answer for x if we were to solve both of those equations. Why won't we? Because x represents two different things. When we solve that equation and we get x equals, that's Lois's distance in the first option. But when we solve that blue equation and get x equals in the second option, that is Peter's distance. It doesn't matter. We could then take what we found and we could apply it. So, again, we have choice. There's some ways that can make our life a little bit easier when we set something up. There's some ways that can make our life a little more difficult. But we have options. The best thing to do is to take your time and translate. Okay, let's jump into actually solving problems now. Here we go. Okay, so what you see on the screen then is a full problem, and you'll notice that at the very end of it, it says, find the numbers. So we're actually going to problem solve now. So what I want you to do is I want you to give that problem a read. Okay, pause it now. Now, okay, we're back. So when you read that problem, you'll notice it's got two sentences. The first sentence says, one number is five more than another number. Okay, the second sentence says, three times the first plus twice the second is 30. Okay, that one's a little bit more wordy. My suggestion to you would be always go to the most basic statement to try to create your variables. Okay, so the question says one number is five more than another number. So we need to find the numbers, which means we need a variable. Okay, so we're going to create a let statement. And we're going to say, let's let x represent, and I don't want you to just write a number. That is too general. Let's be more specific than that. The more specific we are, the easier we actually make it. So let's let x represent the first number. And I'm okay if you want to go and write first in a number and then just even to use the number symbol. Now, why does that make it easier? It's because as soon as I wrote that it was the first number, then by definition, that would mean if we were to count, it would be the first number listed. Or if we were to read a sentence and that sentence had an order to it, then it would be the first number listed. The specifics in that actually make it a little bit easier. Watch when we translate that blue sentence. It says one number is five more than another number. Well, if x is the first number, then that defines it as the smaller number. So one number is five more than another number. So if x is the smaller one, then I know that x plus five is the second number. And I don't even have to write larger beside that because we can see those definitions. So I'm even going to get rid of the larger and smaller, because that is included when we say the first number or the second number. Okay, we just went through and we built our let and then statement. Now what we want to do is we want to take the green underlined sentence and try to translate that into an equation. So what I want you to do, I want you to build the equation based on the green sentence. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So now we got to take that sentence and it says three times the first number, so three times x, plus twice, well twice means two times the second number. Make sure that you did not write that down because that does not say two times the second number, that just says two times x. Make sure that we have brackets around the whole second number. So two times the second number, is means equals, 30. And hopefully we match up with that green equation. If we did, perfect. If we didn't, then we'll make some adjustments 
Because now what I want you to do is I want you to solve that equation. We should be able to almost shut our brain off and be able to go through and solve that equation quickly. Okay, I want you to pause the video now. Okay, so now we're going to go through and we're going to solve that equation, which means we're going to expand in that too. Maybe we spend a line simplifying. I don't know. Maybe we got rid of that 10 a little earlier. And now to get rid of the times by 5, we divide by 5. Okay, we just did some algebra that should have been pretty automatic, and we got down to an x value of 4. Now is the key moment when we say, okay, well, what did we just find? Notice that that x value of 4 has been defined by our let statement. So if we ever say, like, well, x equals 4, well, what was x? Our first statement tells us what x was. X is the first number. So, have we answered the problem? No. We found one of the numbers. We haven't found both. Well, to be able to get that second number then, we can use our then statement. So, you can write down sub x equals 4 into our second expression, which was x plus 5, which is... 4 plus 5. However, I'm going to argue for most people that substitution we can do in our head. And so to finish off the problem then, what I want to do is I simply need a concluding statement. So therefore, the question asked, find the numbers, and if you wrote, therefore, 4 and 9, then you are great. We don't need a big, fluffy, concluding statement that answers the question that was asked. Okay, I want to stop for a sec because I want to make a note of a couple things in the problem so that you know what you have to show me and what you can skip. Okay, right off the get-go, I need everyone to understand that I don't really care whether you can solve this problem. And what I mean by that is I don't really care whether you can come up with the two numbers. So if anyone is going through this problem, and you can tell just by reading the question, ooh, one number is 5 more than the other number, and if I multiply the first number by 3 and the second number by 2, add them together, it's going to give me 30. Oh, those two numbers are 4 and 9. And all you did was write down 4 and 9. You would receive a mark of 0. Because this isn't really about solving a problem like this. What you have to demonstrate is your understanding of using algebra to be able to solve. It's all about the process. So as you work your way through, just keep that in mind. That stating your final answer is a part of the process. But it's almost worth nothing. So we have to make sure that we build an equation, we solve the equation to solve the problem. Okay, I have to see a let statement. It is a must. So this first line is a must. The then statement, I think you're a bonehead if you don't write down that second statement. That then statement, I think, makes your life so easy. However, it's not required. So if you don't include it, it's just a form issue. Okay, everyone has to create your equation. But then after you create that equation, all of these operations in here are you just doing operations. And if you can do a bunch of operations in your head, then feel free to skip any one of those lines. Just make sure that we're not skipping too much where we're going to cause a mistake. But you need to know that if you can do some of that stuff in your head, you don't need to show me all of those red lines. You clearly have to show me your solution to that equation. But then you don't need to show me making that substitution. If you are comfortable to make that substitution in your head and jump right to your therefore statement, you're good. If you did not include a therefore at the beginning of that, then you're losing communication marks. There's your form. Okay, 
I'm hoping you can take a look at that full solution then and you can see what would be expected of you on an evaluation. Okay, let's jump into one more problem and see if we get a little more comfortable with it. Okay, I want to be pausing this video an awful lot on problem four because I think we should be good with our equations. I think we should be a lot better, much improved with our translating. And now that you know the expectation on your solution, I think some people are going to be able to get this one right down to a final solution from the get-go. Okay, so what I want you to do is give the problem a read. If you're comfortable, then don't come back until you've solved it. Otherwise, you go as far as you can until you are stumped. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So, what might have stumped us a little bit was the fact that we had two consecutive integers have a sum of 113. That is, we only had one sentence that gave us a bunch of information, and then the question said to find the integers. So, we may have looked at that then and said, like, but, but I think I want more information. And here's the key. Do not overlook consecutive integers. Because we know what the term consecutive means. That's in a row. And that's going to help us with our let and then statement. We know how our two integers relate to each other. So, we could start it off with let x represent the first integer. Because I know that since those integers are consecutive, then x plus 1 is the second integer. Now, some people would have said, let's let x be the second integer. So if x was the second one, then that makes it the larger one, then one less would have been the first. That's okay as well. But as I said earlier, most people are going to like to add to something as opposed to subtracting from it. Okay, if that was your snag, then I want you to pause the video and I want you to try to finish it off. Okay, so we should be able to build our equation from what we underlined in blue. Those consecutive integers have a sum of 113. So x plus x plus 1, my first integer plus my second integer, is 113. And there's your equation. Now, for us to be able to solve that, it should be pretty quick. We can collect those two x's. We probably already see we want to get rid of the plus 1, so we subtract 1. Now, for us to solve for x, we have to take 112 and divide it by 2. Well, 100 divided by 2 is 50, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, so there's my 56. Okay, the question said, find the integers. Well, I take a look, and I found one of them. Which one did I find? If I go back up, I found x. x was the first integer. That means I need the second one. Well, the second one is x plus 1, so therefore, I'm at 56 and 57. And there we go. If you give me that solution, that is perfect. You defined your variable, created your equation, you solved, and there's your therefore statement. Okay, the other reason why I wanted to tackle this problem is let's just imagine that we made a mistake somewhere. Okay, let's say that I read the problem incorrectly. Okay, I read it incorrectly. And maybe I read within the problem that it said two consecutive, and for some reason I saw the word even integers written in there. So I would have started off saying, okay, let x represent the first integer. And then I would say, let x plus 2, sorry, then x plus 2 is the second integer. Because even integers are two apart. So are odd integers. They're two apart. Okay, I would have then built the equation, and I'm just going to sneak down here for this, that I would have said x plus x plus 2 equals 113. 
Okay, now, why did I really want to talk about this? It's because there's a key word in the problem, and that word actually gives you more information than what you think. And it's the word integer. If we recall that integers have to be whole numbers, they can be positive or negative, but they must be whole numbers. So let's imagine that I just goofed up with my purple. I'm now going through to solve that equation, and I get 2x equals 111. And now when I go through to divide that by 2, I'm going to get 111 halves, and I say, wait a second, that's not a whole number. Or, if I really feel like converting that into a decimal, I'm going to get 55.5. Okay. This is when you can use the information in the problem to help you find your mistake. As soon as I get something like this, I know that I made a mistake. I know it. Because the question says that I'm looking for integers, and my equation did not give me integers. Now, where did I make my mistake? Okay, it's not that clear. Maybe I made the mistake in solving the equation. Right, I made a silly little calculation error. Maybe I made my mistake in building the equation. I didn't translate it correctly. Maybe I made my mistake up in my then statement. Any of those areas would be up for grabs for where I made my mistake. But by looking at that keyword integer, I at least know I made a mistake, and now I go on the hunt to try to find it. Pretty quickly, I go, oh, wait a second, it didn't say even integers, it just said consecutive integers. I make the correction in my then statement, and then I get on a good path. Okay, so don't overlook wording like that. Sometimes we can be given some key information in a problem, and we didn't even know it. Okay, your job now, jump in and get some practice. Translating, and now solving, start to finish some number application problems. Okay, good luck.